Kent E. Nielsen here, and I am delighted to have you with me. Christ came into the world to do the will of his Father, and he prepared a way for you to do likewise. Join me to put him first in your life, receive the fruits of godliness, and realize your divine mission to be like him. You were born and commanded to do greater works than he did. Now let's go to work. Today I'm going to talk about three different items. Who we are children of. Imagine a world if we all focused on Jesus Christ in taking on his character, perfections, and attributes, and his physique. And third, the power of how we do that, the renewal of our mind. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Many prophet leaders teach that we are all children of God. Imagine a world where we focused on being children of God. No divisions, no lines, no nationalities, no race, no creed, but we were all children of God. And we were all striving with all of our heart, might, mind, and strength to become like God's only Son, Jesus Christ. That came and set an example for us in character, perfections, attributes, and in his physique. He mastered his body. His thoughts controlled his body. They were one and in harmony with God's thoughts and his ways. And he taught us how to do likewise. Imagine what would the world be like if we focused individually on who of all the people we can change, which is you and only you or me and only me. I am the master of my ship as you are the master of your ship. And when we turn our focus inward, not in a selfish manner, but in a letting the divine nature from within us to be released to love and to serve and put others before ourselves and to practice the golden rule, we would have a changed world very rapidly. And this change starts with our thoughts. So by Paul, he said, the transformation happens by the renewing of our mind. Why is that? Isaiah teaches us that our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Our ways are not God's ways. And nevertheless, through God, we can have his thoughts and we can live his ways, even as Jesus Christ did and teaches us to do. So if we can transform our thoughts, how do we do it? Are we bound by a particular thought? Yes, we can be, and habit is often the cause of that. What are the habit of our thoughts? How are we seeing life? Often, as author David Bohm put it, thoughts tell us that they're just perceiving and telling us how things really are, but deep down in reality, they are affecting and effecting everything about us, from our inner to our outer. So the key component to taking on the character, perfection, attributes, and physique of Christ is by our thoughts. As my favorite author, James Allen, put it, by thought. Man binds himself. And a few more quotes I'd like to bring to attention from James Allen. He says, No man is helplessly bound. The very law by which he has become a self-bound slave will enable him to become a self-emancipated master. And he also said, Habit binds us. Habit sets us free. Habit is primarily in thought. So that begs the question, how do we elevate Our thoughts. James Allen would teach you that you need to take ownership and accountability and make the change. I love that. You do need to take accountability and ownership. But according to Isaiah, our thoughts are not God's thoughts and our ways are not his ways. But they can be when we take on God's Holy Spirit and his mind through that Holy Spirit and begin thinking like he does through first inquiring after him and seeking after him or as Jesus Christ taught, hungering and thirsting after righteousness that you may be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then when you seek and ask and receive, you are given knowledge, you're given understanding given revelation, given ideas that come to pass very quickly or within the next day or two. And as you take action on those new thoughts and that new vision, you don't perish, you flourish. And then you can make change, permanent change, because you've surrendered your thoughts and your ways and your flesh to God's thoughts and his ways. And as you continue to progress, you can make those changes and change you. And as you change you, it's transforming. It's a ripple effect that changes everyone around you because you change. And again, you are the only one who can change you. So the key component to transforming and renewing your mind is to take on the divine 
help. Take on Jesus Christ. He is the master that enables you to make the transformation. James Allen is amazing. I love him. Again, he's my favorite author. And he teaches you need to take control and you need to make the change. He's missing a little tiny point, but which is massive. And that is that you need an atonement, an at one mint. And that is through Jesus Christ's power. And through him, then you can make the transformation and it becomes easy. It becomes not a battle of wits, not a battle of the power of will or the strength of your arm. It is simply a surrender of your will to God's will. And when you align your life in harmony with the teachings of Jesus Christ, it access to his power and that it requires seeking, coming unto him, seeking him. It requires asking of his help. It requires requires humility and it requires exercising faith that is to act upon those new inspirations that come to you by your inquiry and by your pure heart it allows him to change your thoughts it allows him to enhance your thoughts and your feelings and because you're changing your inner core your inner being it has effects on your physique as well and with that effect you find a change a change in your ideal weight, a change in your affections towards others, a change in serving others, in your mentality, and a lifting of others rather than seeking selfish things and letting your flesh tell you what to do, letting your passions and your pleasures of your body tell you what to do. You turn things around and you stretch your vision as you've turned to God and he enables you to think more clearly and to purify from inside out so that you can change. Thank you for joining me for a brief mental workout. Wise men do their mightiest works with their mental exertions. I encourage you to take time to ponder on the weightier matters of life and to govern your body with pure mental exertions rather than having your body tell you what to do. You are welcome to connect with me further at my link in bio where you can access my book, my social handles, my latest creative updates, and even request coaching services via email. I have been given much and am here to serve. Thank you and God bless you to be fruitful in doing your mightiest works. Good day.